Hello and welcome to the Overly Animated Podcast, where we take animation seriously. We talk everything animation here, including some obscure mech anime, which is what we're going to be getting into today. I'm Justin Cummings, and today I'm joined by Andy Potter. Hey. Today, Andy and I are going to be talking about Gargantia, 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 Gargantia. I've heard it so many ways. Gargantia on the Verterous Planet. Um, yeah, if you want podcasts on things a bit more mainstream, you can check us out at OverlyAnimated.com or by searching Overly Animated on iTunes or your favorite podcatcher. So, this is an anime from 2013. And it's, it's a weird one. It's, it's a bit odd. It's, it's something I saw when, right around when it first came out, and I fell in love with it when I first watched it. And I told everyone to watch it, and I keep bringing it up. I've brought it up on multiple podcasts at this point, and eventually Andy caved and watched it, and so here we are. Uh, before we dive into the specifics of the show, Andy, what are your kind of overall thoughts on Gargantia? I think this show is, the plot of this show is not anything that spectacular, the actual plot, but it does some really interesting thing with themes, and it takes a couple of turns that I don't think you would expect going into it, just because it comes off as a pretty generic mech anime for the mm-hmm. first few episodes, and then it takes a couple of turns that are pretty interesting, and it made me like it a lot more than I thought I would. Um, I'll also say that the... In- I, I think we're gonna get into this a little bit, but the, the the very first episode is probably one of the worst pilots to his show I've ever watched. It does not give you a very good impression of what the show is. Yeah, the pilots. Okay, so I actually I watched the first episode, waited months before I got back into it, and then binged the rest in like a couple of days because yeah. I was just so into it. And I, I think that's just kind of the way the show flows. Um, uh, general synopsis. We're we're gonna get into some spoilers, so. Beginning, we're probably, we want, we're gonna get into some major spoilers to talk about the more interesting stuff. We're gonna have to get into, yeah, we're gonna, this is, this is gonna end up one of our weird philosophical discussions, isn't it, Andy? No, it's going to be, when we get to yeah. some later stuff. Okay, yeah, we're going, okay, so. This the is gonna dream be major, team is back. The dream team is back. This is gonna be a major, uh, spoiler heavy podcast, so if you want to go in this show blind, um, I think, both of us can overall recommend the show. Uh, the pilot's a bit tough to sit through, but after that, it does get good. It's I'd, I'd recommend the show. If you like slice of life stuff, I think you might like this a little more than you'd be expecting. There's not a lot of fighting in this show. It's a lot of character interactions and interesting sci-fi elements. There's not actually a lot of fighting, despite what the first episode mm-hmm. shows. That's all just set up. So if you like slice of life stuff and you like some interesting sci-fi stuff, you're going to like this show. Like, this That's is a mech anime with a total of two mechs. Like, yes, there's two mechs you see, and I think there's only, like, three total fights in the entire show. I think that's right. I think there's only three fights in the entire show. Maybe four? Yeah, I, you could argue four, but I think it's more like three. Okay, against people? Or, okay, we'll get into it. We'll get into it. We'll get, but, we'll get into it. Um, So, yeah, the first episode is a bit weird, but as far as pacing and compared to the rest of the show but overall watch it if you want to go into it completely spoiler free that's where this podcast ends is go watch it uh yeah for those who want spoilers whether you have seen the show or don't mind spoilers welcome uh so brief synopsis kind of overview again um this show is about the galactic alliance and their soldier ensign leto who gets knocked off course during an attack on what is it? The Hidazi? He does? He, he, oh my god, I can never pronounce it. He, he's out? He does? He out. He does. He does. That's it. He does. He does. These weird squid things and gets knocked off course, goes through a wormhole. Basically, the entire first episode is setting up that, like, this is his final test or his final mission, whatever. Stereotypical beginning of this kind of story. Gets knocked off. But he also is. But also the first difference here is that he's not interested in the end. He's not actually excited for the end of his tour of duty. Yeah, no, he's not excited to retire. He just – he does what he does. Like, yes. He's very much a soldier when we meet Leto. He's a soldier yeah. through and through. It's what he loves. I don't want to say loves because he shows no passion in anything. He's just – it is what he is. 
He he's a stormtrooper essentially. Yes, he is a stormtrooper with anime hair. That is yeah, Leto in a nutshell. And he, he just follows orders, and he doesn't really have much of an opinion of things. He goes through uh, this wormhole, ends up in crashed on this boat, and finds out he is on Earth, which it was believed that Earth was only a myth. And yeah. so right away. I forgot, uh, when I saw this, I hadn't read the book, but now that I've read the book, I look at this and I immediately think Foundation. Yes, I, I think I talked to you about that, because a big part of the book Foundation, this isn't spoilers, like, a big part of the book Foundation is that they don't know where where humans originated, like, and, and, and they don't even know where the original planet of Earth is. It's like 10,000 years in the future, and a lot of knowledge has been lost, but also that book was written well before the internet existed, like in the 1950s, I think. So yeah. it makes sense that they think that um, somehow information get lost. It's, it's an interesting concept, though, that they would lose t- track of planet Earth, though. It's interesting. Mm-hmm. And, and this show also kind of... Uh, they tackle it, but only... Only from Leto's perspective, really. Not, it's not well, like the entire Galactic Alliance rediscovers Earth and they have to annex it. In. No. No, which... It, it, but it would be interesting to see some stuff from the Galactic Alliance's perspective in this show. Mm-hmm. I think that might be what this show misses a little bit, because there's not a lot of A and B plots going on. It's mostly just following Leto, mm-hmm. like, 99% of the time. And I think adding a second perspective, maybe not every episode, but some episodes about the Galactic Alliance might have maybe added to my enjoyment of the show a little bit. Not even, like, action stuff, just, like, po- political stuff. Yeah, and I, I feel like that would have been great season two stuff. But yeah. this show never got a season two, and we're we're gonna get there. We are yeah, gonna, we're gonna talk about why there's no season two. Well, um, we'll, and we'll talk about that after we get we talk about the ending. I think is important. Yeah, yeah, we will definitely get into it. So Leto finds out he's on Earth. Um, Earth is now entirely covered in water, and the only humans left live on these large barges and just groups of ships, kind of buoyed together. Yeah, and right off the bat, this is a cool world. Like it is. It's like a piratey, um, not even not steampunk. It's like, it's like but, Wind Waker. It's like Wind Waker. Yes, it is a kind of. It is a very orangey Wind Waker. Yes. Also, I also like you didn't mention it, but the boat like fleet he's on is called Gargantia, and that's what that the title of the show is. Gargantia. Yeah. Yeah. And so, yeah, and I, oh, before we go any further, this is the. I will literally recommend this show for people based purely on the water. Like it's this, very pretty. This show takes place a vast majority of the show. There is water somewhere in the background, be it on the horizon, be it they're near the water, they're above the water. You can see it over someone's shoulder. There is water somewhere in most of the show. And it's and, not CG water. Like they didn't CG in water, which could have been an easy step they could have made. It's all just very prettily uh, animated mm-hmm. water. And even like the opening credits kind of even tell you like, all right, this show has pretty water. Yes. And I think when you do a show that takes place entirely on the ocean, it's very very important that your water looks good. And I think yeah, I I literally recommend this as that show with the great water. Like I cannot get over <laughs> how good it looks, and I. I, the only thing I can think of that has better water animation is that one CG short by uh, um, Pixar, the the Piper one. That's yes. the only thing I can think of that is better water. But okay, that also fair. is like that's like a magnum opus of 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 Pixar in terms of animation quality. Like that thing's insane. But this is still as like really incredible, and, incredible water. And how long is Piper? It's like. Three minutes or four minutes long. It's insane. And it's like a full thirteen episode show. And so like to keep yeah. that to keep that level is yeah. It, it's really impressive. It is. So the main plot of this show follows Leto on Gargantia. Oh, you also mentioned Chamber. Chamber. Oh, we said two mechs. I was gonna get the Chamber. I was gonna get the Amy first and then Chamber. Fine, fine. So all the soldiers in the Galactic Alliance they have these mech suits. AI. What are they actually called? Machine calibers. They're, they're, they're called, the, the AI is called something else though. It's called a artificial intelligence assistant essentially. Yes. It, they had a different, they had a different name for it, but that's, it's essentially what it is. It's an, it's an, it's an assistant that's also an AI. Chamber is ours, uh, it's Leto's, uh, machine caliber. And 
I love Chamber. Like, I also call this show the anime equivalent of Iron Giant. Because it... Leto and Chamber's friendship is... It's the Iron Giant. Like, what, do you, do you disagree with this, or...? I think it's actually a little different, but I don't think that... I, I agree their friendship is this, the heart of this show. It's, um... It's really good. It's really good. It's slightly different than Iron Giant, just because, um... It hmm. comes across that... It's not that one of them knows something the other doesn't, like... In Iron Giant, Hogar, like, understands a lot more than the Iron Giant. But in this one, it's like, they both understand things differently than each other, and they both teach right. each other this show. And it's really it's really interesting to see the lessons they learn from each other. So going off of Chamber, we meet a lot of people on the ship. We meet Ridget, we meet Bellows, we meet Leta, um, Amy, rather, might be... Pinion. Pinion. Uh, we meet a lot of really cool people. In the span of, like... Five minutes. About five All the people on the boat who just, like, show up, like, what is this thing that crashed on our ship? And that's when we meet, like, the main people on the ship. The uh, only person we don't meet is the fleet commander in that one and scene. And there's good reason. No, there is. There is. Um, I'll start with Amy, because Amy is, like... Okay, a lot of this show is kind of the budding romance between Leto and Amy. Yes. And it's very much a fish-out-of-water... It's a fish-out-of-water romantic comedy. Like, Amy in runs ways, yes. this messenger service... And, uh, she's 15, he's 16, and she's, like, the first person he really talks to. Like, not just, yeah. this is who I am, this is my identification, but, like, has a real conversation with. And what's so cool is, he doesn't speak their language. No. And that's whatever language it's in. Like, the show, no matter what language the show itself is in, let us speak something different. Yeah, and I watched the dub, and if you're listening, like... When Leto went, went like and it kind of hops between perspectives. When we're seeing from the boat's perspective, they're speaking English, and we see from Leto's perspective, they're speaking English. But if but but from but um but when from Leto's perspective, when we're hearing the boat people speak, it's in Japanese, and the same is true when we're from the boat people's perspective, listening to Leto. Mm -hmm. And so you're never the the gap, the language gap is always clear, and it's always something that's an almost insurmountable canyon between them. But it. It, it's a very interesting way to do it. They did it very well. I was surprised by how well they did this language barrier. And it's really cool to watch over the course of the show because at the beginning, uh, the way they get around this language barrier, Chamber is able to uh, translate a little bit. Yeah. And as the show progresses, we see Chamber translating less and less as you see Let. And this is how you know time's passing. Yeah. It's not just over the course of a couple of days. Leto's there for a long time because he learns the language, I'd say, I'd say fluently. He learns it fluently, but he also doesn't just suddenly get it. It feels earned when he's speaking in their language um, right. successfully. You, you see several episodes of him struggling and getting it, like learning the language. Like it doesn't just go from chambers translating. The chambers not translating. It's less and less and less until Leto can speak English. And it's or, not just that when he he speaks like little phrases. It's that he actually speaks in ideas first, which is like how you speak a language when you don't understand it. He like says. He he says words that aren't quite right for the situation, but you get the meaning of what he's saying, and it's really well done. I like it a lot. Yeah, there's there's a lot of thought put into this show and the way the world functions, and I think it, that's part is. of why it's so great. It is. Um, other people we have we have Ridget. She's second in command of the uh, of Gargantia. Yep. We have Bellows, who runs the excavation team. We have Pinion, who's head of the repairmen. Oh, is Pinion the first one we meet? Pinion is the first, he's the one banging on, like, the head of mm -hmm. Chamber when, 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 um, I, I think he is the first one we see. And then we almost immediately see Bellows after that. Right. Also, and when I saw Bellows, have you seen Gurren Logan? I've not, but I'm aware of it enough to recognize that Bellows looks very similar. She, she is literally Yoko. That's, that's all I have to say. She literally is, like, she has a better character arc than in Gurren Logan, but, but, but her, her character design is literally just Yoko. From that show. Uh, other major players, uh, Fairlock is the commander. The reason yeah. we don't see him immediately, he's very sickly. And, yes. Uh, Ridget, like I said, second in command, and that whole thing becomes a big part of the show. And then, uh, Bebel would be the only other one, I think, Arden Gargantia we really need to talk about. And that's oh, and, and, and the, uh, Doctor. Okay, yeah, the Doctor, uh, Oldham? Well, whose name I forget. Old Ham, uh, I'll look Oldham, up. going, something like that. But uh, Bebel's I'm awesome. Not, like Bebel I like Bebel. Any converse? Oh, Oldham, that's the doctor. Oldham. Oldham. 
Yeah. Oh no, I just realized we watched you watched the the sub, right? Yes. So are the names different in the sub? <gasps> no. I hope not. No, no, it seems like they're the same. Okay, that's good. Okay, so we're not going to get confused when we talk. And I'm also but, uh, looking at like the English versions, and I'm like, got it, because that name goes with that, and then got it. Just yeah, double check. Okay, cool. So Oldham is the doctor, but Bevel, Bevel is like really interesting. And every conversation we have between Bevel and um, Leto is always surprisingly philosophical. Like th- these are clearly meant to be philosophical discussions between Bevel and Leto, but they come. A- like, I don't know. The way they did it was just so well. Like, it doesn't feel heavy handed at all. It feels like a real conversation that could happen between two distinct cultures clashing against each other. And it's really interesting because over the course, uh, Bevel is Amy's younger brother. brother. He's bedridden, um, wheelchair bound. And which, what? Which goes against everything that Leto is, um, come, has come to learn in the army. Mm hmm. Like, He's weak in Leto's eyes. He's insignificant. Yeah. He's flawed. He's broken. But Bevel looks up to Leto as kind of this, this big brother character, especially towards the end of the show. Yet at the same time, Bevel's teaching Leto. Yes. He's teaching him what it means to be a person, what it means to have good character and heart. And on top of that, he's teaching him the language and just day-to-day objects. And yeah, so you have this interesting character who's a teacher, yet also a little brother role. And it's just this amazing dynamic. Yeah, it's really good. And there's also like when, when we have these conversations, it never comes across to me that Leto is actually um, emotionally agrees with these things he's saying. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. He's just saying them like they logically make sense. And that always comes across, and that's a really difficult thing to do because he's saying things that are morally objectable, but you, but he doesn't seem like he's a morally ad- objectable person. Does that make sense? Right, and it all kind of fits Leto's character of it does. A equals A, B equals B, C equals C. These yeah. are the things that I know. These are the things that work. And it it never. But he's it, clearly willing to learn it. Yeah, he's, but willing he's clearly to learn. willing to learn a different opinion, or at least listen to a different opinion. Mm-hmm. And he never. He never writes off Bevel either, and I think that's what's so interesting. Yeah. And I think this is part of why I love the show so much, is in Western animation, we're often kind of lacking um, young, like, in any age, really. We're lacking kind of good male protagonists. Like, yes. Yeah, they'll fight and beat stuff up, and it's super cool, but it's rare that we get interesting character moments and interesting growth. I mean, we obviously have a few. We have Steven... Um, we have others that I'm immediately forgetting as soon as I said something because I'm blanking. Um, I'm, we, I'm trying to help, but I, I'm, I'm blanking as well. I apologize. I'm blanking. This is real sad. Um, we'll get back to that. But like, so we're missing a lot of that. Okay, Ko- okay KO. Okay, KO, yeah. That's okay. And I'd say Finn. Like, what we're getting there? Yeah. Like, this show came out in 2013. This was like, it actually aired right before Steven. And so, yeah. like, in that era, there wasn't a lot of. There's a lot of male protagonists. There weren't a lot of really interesting character-driven male protagonists in Western yeah, and animation. It, I think as we approach the end of this series, though, he does become a little more shonen esque for a little bit, like during uh, specifically the last fight of the se- of the show. He does, but, but I'd almost argue that the situation calls for it. No, no, no. The episode, the episode definitely calls for it, and it definitely justifies it. But I'm just saying that other than that, he is actually a um, interesting character with mm-hmm. a lot of interesting motivations that um don't it doesn't just come across as i'm a guy i want to hit stuff or i'm a guy and i need to be unemotional it's he has a character and it's definitely interesting to watch and when he does fight it's not it's not i'm a guy i have to hit stuff it's i am a soldier i fight for gargantia now i'm defending my home Yes, he's he his fighting. He always is very good about separating his soldier side from his off duty side, and like these are two separate Leto's until the very end of the show, which is why I say like that's a shown in character at the end. He at the very end of the show, he's letting his off duty side go slip into his uh, soldier side, which is causing him to be a lot more emotional while fighting, which is a very shown in thing. But it makes sense in this show and makes sense with his character. 
So how do you want to tackle this? Do you want to tackle this chronologically, or do you want to I, tackle this by theme and like? I wanted to tar- I wanted to really hit on three different things. The first of which is the pirates he killed, the big twist, and the final confrontation. Those are the three things I wanted to talk about. I'm fine with those. Let's add in a fourth of Amy and just that whole development. Yeah, but before we get into that, I want to say that there are some problems with the show in that it's in it's Japan animated. Like there are some problematic things with transgender things just want to going talk about on that whole episode right off the bat because that has my least favorite moment of the show and my favorite yeah, moment let, of the show. let's talk about that before we get into the stuff we really like because i think it would be a disservice to not okay. mention them at all so um do you want to start because it's actually a this is this is an episode that has a really cool plot and then a really problematic plot yes and so and which do you want to talk about first the really i want cool to talk to the bad elements Let's just talk about the bad elements because okay, the good elements, it's like it's 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 just a slice of life, really interest, a really good episode. But there's this really bad part where they let where they're having like a barbecue of some kind, and they tell and um, Tinian asks Leto to go pick something up for him, and Leto has to go through a very dark and um, really um, kind of isolated part of the ship, which is fine. That's fine. There should like I'm okay with there being a really creepy section of Gargantia. It's an old fleet. There's going to be run-down parts of it. But the problem is that when he goes into this really run-down part of the fleet, he finds a bunch of... Um, it's not clear if these are cross-dressing men or transgender women, but either way, they're a very bad portrayal of either one of them. And is it implied they're prostitutes or confirmed they're prostitutes? I didn't think they were prostitutes. I just thought they were... It was a... Um, very poor representation of quote unquote over sexual transgender people. You know what I mean? Like yeah. it was I got, like I got the idea that it was like a red light district, which doesn't make it that much better at no. all. But no matter like no matter how you interpret this, it's really bad. I can yeah. see how you interpret it that way, but I think that my interpretation is still valid as well. Mm-hmm. Like it's just no matter how you interpret this, it's just really really bad. They're like it's these. The body structure of these people are big, muscular men wearing very, very small dresses for their frame, and um, it's just really, really offensive and really, really bad. And all they really do is they try to um, ass- what what appears to be sexually assault Leto. That's what they're trying to do. Think- it's horrendous. It's, it's just absolutely horrendous. This this plays into my. Uh- my, I think they're prostitutes. I think they're trying to recruit him as well. I don't. Either way, like I could, I guess I could see that that's what they're doing, but it's I don't, not good like, either way. I'm just no, no. That's why I'm thinking. Like I'm, I'm thinking trying to get context saying. of the scene for those yeah, who may not like, seen it, just so you can get kind of an idea of what's happening here. Like, like after, after, like what happens is he walks into this dark section of the ship. Then these people that I just described walk out. I'm being careful with the pronouns because I'm not sure if they're supposed to be transgender or cross-dressing i'm not 100 percent sure Correct. but they come out and we hear leto scream and i'm like and immediately upon hearing that scream i'm like oh no this is going to be horrible because next we see him kind of like pokemon style running from mm-hmm. like this group of like this rabble of people behind him and the next time we see him he's covered in like lipstick and stuff like that and it's very clear that they've been trying to do things with him. Not to mention he's under age. He's like 16, which is also another thing on top of that. What is the uh, age of consent in Gargantia? Is it? Well, it, I, I think it's more important to look at the age of consent in Japan, which I'm not sure what that is. Is that... Is that... I, I feel like most countries outside the U.S. are 16, just from mm. international students I've talked to. This I could is, be wrong, by the way, this but... is a bad thing to enter into Google. Japan age of consent. Just... Oh my god, it's 13. Alright, so... That okay, so that part we can blame on culture, like. That, oh, okay. It's the it's the federal age of consent, but most prefectures have it at eighteen. Okay, so we will give them a a semi pass on that part. Yes, we'll give. I'll, but that I'll, is not I'll, the main I'll, part of this. Like. No, 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 no. No, sorry. This is this, this. That was that was a little off topic, but uh, that not was just by far. No. Um. But no, but that's that just and – and they come up multiple times. It's not just like a one-off gag, which at that point is like it's offensive, but at least it's over. It's there for like 10, 15 minutes of this episode. It's thankfully, a bulk of this episode. Thankfully, it's the only episode this happens. Do you see them at – you see them in the final episode, but they're not – they're like helping load things. Right, but they're again, not 
doing anything problematic besides their but depiction. besides their appearance. Right. But the thing is, even with their appearance, it's like, would they really be wearing these skimpy dresses while doing manual labor? It makes no sense. It's just really, I, I just I can't express right. how upset this made me. And part of me, I don't want to give an excuse on like, oh, the times and the culture. It was but, 2013. But in Japan, I, I'm i not well versed in how progressive Japan is. It's, I, I will say this much, and I, I want to walk on eggshells here. I know that there are some things that they are significantly behind us on, but we're also, in terms of U.S., the U, like the U.S. is we're bad on some things and Japan is bad on some things. And I think that we are surprised because the things they're behind on are different than the things we're behind on. Does that make sense? Yeah. And I think that's all this is. Like, there are some, I'm sure j- some Japanese people would watch Western animation and be surprised that they see, like, that there's just some things that we don't, that we put into our shows still that mm-hmm. they'd be completely confused about. And I, I, and I think that's just a cultural thing. But at the same time, that doesn't make this better. No, it doesn't make it better. I'm just trying to put into context a little bit. Yes, I'm not giving it a I pass. I'm, I'm still, it's still definitely problematic. Yeah. Which is really unfortunate because I love the rest of this episode. That's the this thing. episode. Like the idea of this episode is really good. It's, if you just cut out this stupid mm-hmm. thing, and not to mention the most offensive part of this, it serves nothing for yes. the plot. It does nothing. This this episode would not have changed if it was just some like creepy criminals. You know what I mean? Just some people with like knives and something, or like if it was just something silly, like some old grandmas who want to like. Like, get him to help. You know what I mean? I could see mm-hmm. these things happening in, in a life, slice of life anime, but they instead went for the really offensive route, which is insane. The, uh, the rest of the episode, to put into context, is it's this show's equivalent of a beach episode, where it's yeah. really calm seas, and so they can stop the engines. Yeah. So they all kind of like go on the outer parts of the ship, so they're kind of like on the beach, even though we're always on the ocean. Yeah, and so it's it's a really interesting take on the beach episode, and like I said, this gives me my favorite moment of the entire show, where uh, Pinion cannot get any grills working, he cannot get anything yes. started. Yes, he has Chamber lay down, and because Chamber is made of black material, he starts frying, he starts uh, grilling the burgers on Chamber. Yes, and Chamber is con- like continually asking, "What is the purpose of this action? What is the purpose of this action?" Because he just cannot like, stay still. <laughs> and it's just—it's one of my it. favorite scenes. Like, it's just—it's so brilliant. Yeah, it's really great. And, and then it also is... has the really beautiful moment with the uh, with the water spraying on the rest mm-hmm. of the deck. Mm-hmm. It's from just... the. Uh, uh, from it, it, at this point in the show, we think it's just a watering system for the plants on board, but later we learn it's something else. Yeah, which we'll get into. But um, it's uh, it, it's it's just a really pretty episode. Besides that one thing, besides those this weirdly offensive thing that just pops in in like about like five minutes into the episode, and it's it's a major part. It's like the major quote unquote conflict of the episode: Leto being chased by these people. Yeah. It's just, it's it's just not good. And the rest of the episode is good, I agree. It's like we get to see Gargantian people talk to each other and interact and just you realize that even though some of them disagree on things, they still like each other and they still want to protect each other. And it's a really important episode by the end. Mm-hmm. But um I guess I guess like that's all I really wanted to say before we get into like the stuff I really like. Like I wanted right. to mention we aren't oh, we aren't just ignoring the fact that there are problems here but unfortunately that's just how it is some shows have problems and it just sucks it really sucks all right so do you want to jump into the pirate stuff first you said yes i wanted to talk about specifically the first pirate one where leto kills everybody you know what I, you know what i mean yeah with a uh, lukage yes all right, and- okay this is is this problematic or Oh no 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 not, not Lukage not Lukage I'm talking about the one before we meet the the lady with the um this the slaves okay I'm talking um, about the we can talk about that too though I'm talking about the first one where he kills all the pirates and unlike every other like action anime the people are horrified they're not excited that he went off and saved them they're like why'd you do this and it wasn't just like they're gonna come get us like that was part of it it was like 
you killed people. What are you doing? Like they, that wasn't part of their lifestyle. They would never go out and just randomly kill people. They want to make sure that they would rather diplomatically speak. And Leto just doesn't understand that. He went out there thinking, this will be a bargaining chip. I'll defeat them, kill them all, and then people will like me. And the people didn't just die off screen. Like He literally vaporized people on screen. It was a very intense thing to see for the people that were on the boats that were from Gargantia. It was very violent, and it's but this show tackled it in a very different way, and I have really appreciated it. I really appreciated that we got into this discussion in a um, – and I think a really natural way of – like war, like the way soldiers act, you, it can lead to some bad things in the future like this. It can lead to you being dehumanized, and it was a very interesting part of this episode and it led through this entire show this dehumanization that we'll get to when we get to talk about the big twist dehumanization is a major Mm -hmm. theme in this show in general and this is just a really interesting way to tackle it because you expect the crew to be happy you expect them leto to come back and them to be like okay let's talk now let's figure something out but that's just not what the show wants to do it does not want to make it so that they do not want to glorify violence in any way in this show right and so it's uh, the consequences are immediate too. Like the next episode begins with the kind of the, the pirate queen, so to speak, yes. being like, "Oh, someone went and attacked and vaporized my people. I'm getting revenge." And so, like, we immediately see consequences of it. It's not, but like, it's not just. It's not just the physical consequences though. We talk about how it's still wrong, even if there wasn't consequences mm-hmm. like that. That we Amy still talks to Leto and says. These are people, Leto. These aren't like the aliens you were fighting, but we'll get to that later too. These aren't the random monsters you're fighting. These are people you're killing. You need to not do this, Leto. You need to – like this is still human life and we can talk to these people. They're just like you, Leto. They have thoughts and things they like to do. And that was really important to this because it wasn't just that there was a consequence that was physically threatening Gargantia. It's that we talked – we made it personal mm-hmm. in every way we could. Sorry, you can go go on now and talk about. No, luggage. no, I didn't really want to talk about the Pirate Queen, and so when when you brought up pirates, I'm like, why does he want to talk about Lukage? But okay, I mean, yeah, yeah Lukage is a Luke character. Is just like, go ahead, go ahead. She's the very over the top, over. Uh, is she feminist or not? Oh boy, this is why I'm a calm major gender studies minor is to answer these exact questions. Do it. What is it? She's, um, an over, she's an over-sexualized woman with what appears to be two women sex slaves. What are, what are we doing here? Yes. Um, she is an over-sexualized woman with uh, two women she keeps on leashes. Who call her mistress. Who call her mistress. Um, as a person outside the bedroom, she seems alright. Like, she stands... You know, she defends her pirate people at the end. She, you know, she helps out Leto. Like, she's got good morals all in all. Um, you know, I don't want to yuck anyone's yum or judge whatever's going on there. Um, as long as the ladies and leashes are cool with it, I'm cool with it. I mean, we never get into it. I think it's just kind of, I think it's just there to show, like, this is a powerful woman. Yes. And I don't think they went about that in the best way. Best no. way? Um, low hanging fruit is what I will call it. It's effective, yes. but yes. I wouldn't necessarily call it the best way to handle that. No. I'd also say that I think as the show progresses, it comes across more that these two women are not literal slaves, but. But when uh, you first I, see them, especially, it's like, oh. Um, yeah. It, 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 it could have been done better. They could have. Um, I think there was time to uh, show this in a way that could have been better. I don't think it would ever would have been progressive, per se, but no. I do think they could have not had it be quite as uh, strange as it was. It was just out of place more than anything. It was. But I mean, but it, I guess they were trying to show maybe the lawlessness of the pirates. I, yeah, I think that's what they were trying for. And we also got to see her cool uh, mech. Also, for the record, they have a name for the mechs in the show. I'm not even going to try to say it because I completely forget what it is. They they get like they had like an actual in universe word name for them. Yeah, I I can't remember how to pronounce. And it. I don't think it's important. It it was hard to pronounce. I'll, I remember that much. So, do you want to talk about the major twist now? Yeah, I think I think we've talked about it enough, and I think we had a little build up to talk about dehumanization because 
in the very first episode, we learned that um, humanity is um, kind of cordoned off to these like space stations, and they're fighting against this space dwelling alien race that's that is just really good at expanding and holding on to like um, uh, planets and stuff. Like they're just really good. They're like kind of squid shaped, and they can shoot lasers and stuff sometime, and they're really scary mm-hmm. and powerful. And that's essentially what Leto's been trained to fight. And at one point, Leto is helping some people salvage underwater, um, and they, um, like, gather, like, that's how they keep the ship afloat. They gather salvage from sunken ships underwater and bring it back up. And he's helping someone do this because his mech is just so much better than everyone else's. And Chamber says, one of them is here. A Hideous is here. And we see a squid, just a little bit different of a squid, and it just, triggers Leto to start attacking it, and we find out that there's just a ton of them all over Earth. We find out there are these all these Hidiaos on Earth, these crazy aggressive aliens that have been trying to exterminate humanity, essentially. And this leads us to Leto trying to kill them all, which he pretty successfully does. He kills thousands. Like, it looks like hundreds or thousands of them in there, one of this. There is pushback, though. Yes. Uh, it turns out that the humans on Earth view these animals as sacred. And it's uh, also – it's not clear if they view them as sacred because they just look pretty or because they know that they're very powerful. You know what I mean? I, because, I think it's like they're seen as like I, – I think it's like because they're so large and massive. Yeah. Um. But yeah, they view them as sacred, and so it actually – they end up splitting the fleet in half in order to the, – you have the ones who want – to go and take out these, uh, the Hedeows or the Whale Squids, as the Earth people call them. Yes, sorry, Whale Squids. The ones who think Leto's correct, the ones who agree with him and want to kill them, and then those who think, no, these are sacred animals, we can't do this. And so the fleet actually splits in half, and Leto ends up separate from Amy, and this becomes... We'll talk about Amy later. Yeah, but this is also important because um, this is a regression in Leto's character back to being a soldier, which Mm -hmm. is an important part in any character's journey, and I'm glad it's here. I'm not trying to knock that but i also but it's also important to note that they're doing this because there are there's a whale squid nest that's close by that's in a that's underwater and they and they they think there's really good salvage there and they want um leto to kill them all and leto doesn't care at all about that he just wants to kill the whale squid but tinian and, and company they want to salvage everything here and use it and use it um, there's also a little bit there with Pinion and his brother dying there, but that's kind of minor in the larger scheme of things. But um, so so Leto pretty much kills all the whale squid without breaking a sweat for the most part. Like it, it's never really you're never really it never seems like Leto's in any real danger during any of these fights because these Kidiaos are um, these whale squids are weaker than the aliens he was fighting in general. Like they don't have the armor they need to traverse through space they're just kind of like squishy squids and mm-hmm. he gets through and he gets through the and he gets down into the nest and he goes through the facility and he starts walking through an area with um larval um whale squids and to us the viewer they look quite a lot like fetal humans inside egg sacs and it makes sense that um Leto doesn't recognize this because he was, he's a stormtrooper, like we said. So he doesn't recognize these as human fetuses. And he's just like stomping through and killing them. He's killing these, what appear to be glowing human fetuses. And he gets through there and he finds this structure. And this is where the twist happens. He finds old tapes and he finds out that, that the whale squids are actually a branch of human evolution that was put upon by science. And this is like the most. It, it, it's the, the twist is fine, but the way they play it off with Leto is incredible. It's bone chilling. It is bone chilling because he watches this video and he sees some people transformed into whale squids, and we see specifically a little girl or a wife. It's not clear which one of them is turned into a into a whale squid. I'm gonna keep saying whale squid because it's easier to say it than the. Japanese name, um, transformed into a whale squid, and she's she has slightly different coloration, so we know exactly who she is. And as he finishes this video, he starts talking to Chamber, and Chamber's like, "Well, you're not supposed to know this. You're not supposed to know that these whale squids are human. The Galactic Alliance knows, but they know if we told the soldiers, they wouldn't fight." 
and but Chamber also he is an AI. He can't like break the rules as easily, so he's prepared to kill them all. But Leto doesn't want to, and at this moment. The, the whale squid he saw in the video that he knows, he knows for a fact was a human, comes in front of Chamber, and Chamber crushes it in its bare hand without Leto's input. And it is probably the most bone-chilling moment I have seen in a show. It's just like... This, I can't... Go ahead. I've talked a lot. Go ahead. This, to me, is the moment where the show goes from like, alright, it's a cool anime... To this show is one of the deepest I've ever seen. This, this is what I meant by like the plot is fine, but the themes are really deep. This like they don't just do this plot and then move on. Like this is an important thing that they've been building up to because we already talked about dehumanization in earlier episodes, and this is an important this, this is important for Leto to realize. It, it's not just about that these people are human and that the people he recognizes are human. It's about how even things you don't recognize could have value in being alive. It's a, there's like so many levels to this. And Leto recognizes all of them. He is not like some, and it's not just he's screaming and crying. He's, he actually, we get to see him piece this together and talk with it with Chamber. And it's really impressive the way they do this. And it's so heartbreaking mm-hmm. to see how Leto reacts to it. It's, the the director of the show talked about wanting to make something aimed kind of at late teenagers, early 20-somethings, trying to find their way in the world, and kind of wanting to make like a magnum opus for yeah. that generation. And you watch this, and you get that kind of timeless, every teenager should experience this feel. Like, not, not that I get with a lot of modern young adult, but like something yeah. I get from like The Outsiders, something I get from The Giver. I, I get this. Of, what this is this is the kind of feeling I get from like a sci-fi book, like Ender's Game, even like this mm-hmm. is this is like how how different emotions and feelings can transcend technology. Like it doesn't matter that this is like genetics and like mech anime stuff. It's it matters that these two different races are categorically or used to be human, and it's a really important moment. It. It, it teaches sympathy and empathy and just – it teaches a lot of lessons, but while at the same time not forcing the, forcing those lessons down your throat. We it never – like we're, the lessons we're talking about right now, it didn't say any of them out loud in, in his few words. It's all just stuff that clearly comes across Leto's mind while he's trying to piece this together. Right. Which is an important thing and a very difficult thing to do to get across a moral lesson while not actually stating that lesson. Yeah, it's, it's, I just, I love, I watched this my junior year of high school, so okay. I definitely have kind of a, I think a closer bond to this show, just because I watched this when I was Leto's age. Yeah. And so to kind of have that, like, you know, being a teenager is an odd time, and to kind of have, like, all of a sudden be thinking about, you know, okay, I'm thinking about, like, who's, who am I going to prom with, uh, now I need to be thinking about, like, who's human and how do I treat people? And it's just like, yeah, it's just impactful. Like, and this, this, this scene could have been done in the first episode, but it wasn't. They, they built up the world very, very well. They built it up, not just in a world building way, but in, like I said, a thematic way. Like it felt like the rest of the things we'd been seeing thematically built up to this realization. And it matched a lot of the conversations that, Leto had had previously, but none of those conversations let on to the fact that this was going to happen. None of them really let on to that, which makes it a really great twist. There's a small scene early on in the show where Leto is served a uh, cooked octopus. Yes. Boy freaks out. He's like about to, you know, go yeah. blaster happy on it because he's just so ingrained in fighting these things. Yeah. And to see him have that moment of sympathy is just such a powerful turning point it is because it that's the moment when thing the entire show shifts Mm because there's like i think four or five episodes of slice of life and pirate stuff and then we get this episode where he sees the octopus corp corpse essentially and um and then it immediately shifts to back to these ideas that we were talking about with amy and the pirates but in the frame of reference but in the frame of reference that leto 
better understands and better is more um, connected to. Because it's easy to convince someone of some, that something's wrong right after you did it wrong one time. But it's really hard to convince some, someone that something's wrong after you've been doing it your whole life. He's been killing these things his whole life. And it's really hard to convince him that this is the wrong thing to do until Amy's lessons overlap with what he's seeing and it's it's it just makes a lot of sense and it's done so well. I'm very impressed by this scene. It it's a very cliche scene in a lot of ways, but the themes and the setup are just so good here. You want to talk about the the kind of the final arc and then we'll get into Amy? Sure. Because this this after this point, I don't think we really we don't really talk about the whale shark whale squids ever again. Not not in any major way, kind of. Um, we this, have it, we have new issues to deal with. Yeah, but it, it, it's in the same vein because at this point, Leto. This is this is Leto. As after this point, Leto is um someone who kind of better understands empathy, but he's also a little bit lost. He's a little bit confused. He's a, he needs some guidance, and at this point, it's unclear who that guidance is going to be from. But then he finds out that his commander, Commander Kugel, is alive. And he's on Earth with him, with his mech, and whose name is Stryker. So it's Stryker and Kugel and Leto and Chamber. Um, but but this this is perfect for Leto at this point. He he's found structure again. He's found his commander, and he's like, my commander's older than me. He's wiser than me. He'll be able to tell me what's wrong here, what's going on. And he doesn't really get that. He doesn't get easy answers. And he also gets he finds Kugel doing things that. He's learned from her Gargantia are wrong. He's creating a cult, and he's trying to make the people of Earth like the people of the Galactic Alliance. He's killing the people who are weak, and he's and he's making people – it's, it's essentially a cult, a cult that worships um, his power. Um, and it's interesting because if this had happened any point before Leto had that moment in the facility finding out about whale squids – he probably wouldn't have questioned this. He would have stopped for a moment, then like accepted that this is what Kugel was doing. But he does not agree with this from the very start. No. He is completely against this idea. He has seen what people can do when they're free. He has seen how people have goals and loves and family members that they love too. And this just does not – insert well into the world that he's visited into the place he's visited and he doesn't want this place to become the galactic alliance and then we do get a crazy fight scene after that but i think everything before the fight scene is the most important part you're you're forgetting the uh you're forgetting the twist there's one last twist oh yeah yeah yes 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 the the other thing which leads into another interesting um theme that also is another interesting thing that goes along with all these themes we've been mentioning is that Kugel it, it 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 turns out that Kugel is actually dead and that Stryker the AI inside the inside the mech is following kind of the letter of what Kugel wanted but not really the spirit of it mm-hmm. and it's interesting because it, it, we suddenly interject this thought that I think every viewer has had up until this point of how cog, like how human are these AI that we've been listening to, Chamber specifically. And it just, and the show is like, yeah, don't worry, we're going to get into that with this scene, with this fight. Like, it's like, don't worry, we know. We know that this is something you've been thinking about with Chamber. Cause Chamber does sound very, emotional even sometimes even though he is a robot and we get to this and, and now striker is trying to do stuff like striker's trying to like do what i said with make it like the galactic alliance and it's pretty creepy stuff and at this point this is the moment that we spark a fight really and they and and there's some interesting anime style uh mech fights going on in the sky and it's actually a pretty cool fight if i must say but um it, it it ends kind of on a bittersweet note. And do do you want to get do you have more to say about this before we talk about like the very end? I want to say I want to say the very end. I want to say what happens. Go ahead. Do you think we're time for that? It's my show. Uh, Chamber goes full Iron Giant. He relieves Leto of his duty. Yes. Ejects Leto and destroys Striker and himself in one final attack. 
But he also, in in very similar Iron Giant vein, he says a phrase we've been hearing the whole show. Which phrase was it? He he called he called Stryker a tin can. Yes. And that is something that Pinion kept calling him over and ever. Like it was it was a phrase that um, Chamber kept hearing over and over again. And you and you think like Pinion, stop insulting him. But you realize that Chamber accepted that chamber accepted that he's not human and that he's there to help humanity and he accepted that and he took that to the grave with him and it's a really emotional moment to realize that was his motivation when he said that yeah i cried i will be the first to admit i cried when chamber died like i don't know about the um subversion in the um dub there there was cursing and did, did you have cursing in your version uh, yes Okay, so I think the actual phrase he says is he says, go to hell, Tin Can. And it's just like, the it, it was so surprising, because I don't think until that point any curse words had been used in like an aggressive way in the show. No. And this was just so different than the way everyone, because everyone kind of spoke to each other in a way, in a form, and like, in a respectful way. Curse words kind of came out when someone like dropped a, a brick on their foot in that kind of way. Which happened but a no lot. One, they were at a which, shipyard, I mean. Yeah, yeah. It made sense. It made sense that a worker who was like worked there their entire life would drop a nail or something or drop a hammer and just be like would curse off about it a little bit. But this was the first time we saw someone cursing in a way that was like, curse you. You are a horrible person, curse you, you need to die. And it was just I think that's what made it so powerful. And I think it shows kind of how the power of intense words like that because mm-hmm. if you use them all the time they kind of lose their meaning but if you use if you sprinkle them the way this show did it, it's really really impactful when they finally use them in this way and i was like i think it's a show that does it similarly as bojack horseman they tend to not use the f word that much but they but they use them to very good they use that word to very specific um for very specific means in a very and it's sprinkled through each season and it's very good but this show also understands that, and I really like that about that ending scene. Do you want to talk about Amy? You can. I think you're a lot more excited about Amy. You go oh, ahead, man. I adore Amy. Like, yeah. okay, from the very moment they lock eyes, you're like, okay, the show is going that Leto and Amy are going to fall in love. And they do. But yeah. it is one of my favorite romances in animation. It's just... <sighs> And we see the time skips. Like, we see that it's not, like, immediate. Because Leto doesn't understand this concept of love. He doesn't even understand the concept of, like, friendship. But no. Amy teaches him that. And Amy's willing to, to show him these things and show him these ideas. And he grows and he understands. And he sees other girls around Amy. There were plenty of girls his age that he could have decided to chase after. But he fell in love with Amy. And yeah. not just Amy. I think this is important. Leto's relationship with Bebel. And that yes. he wants to not just be with Amy, but he wants to be part of this family. He does. And the the show, for all of its weird over-sexualization with the problematic stuff we talked about, um, with the and even know, transsexual the- cro- uh, cross-dressers, with Lukage, Amy's not... Oh, no, 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 she is in one episode. But are we talking about the festival? Yes. Here's the thing about the festival. I love this. This is probably my favorite use of fan service. Uh, second, my favorite non-comedic use of fan service in any anime. And here's why. Yes, she's in kind of a skimpy outfit. It's culture to those people. They don't it, see it. Yes. They don't see it as bad. They don't see it as anything other than a ritual celebration and like yeah. a traditional dance. She's in like a dance attire that's very kind of belly dancer, very, very. And minimal she's not clothes. alone. She's with other kids. Right. She's with right. Other There's kids. other dancers. And but I do. I, I just dislike it because it seems like the audience is cheering in a way that's more um, about how they look than about what they're doing. But I mean, it, it could be. I understand what you're saying. It is very much a cultural thing. That, it appears that part. Yes. It's the part when she does it again just with Leto. Yes. That that is is one of my favorite scenes ever. Because Leto's seeing this and Leto's reaction is, what is this feeling I'm having? 
Yeah, no. You can tell that he's a uh, he's like going through puberty in front of our eyes in this scene. He's basically skyrocketing through puberty in about t- ten seconds, and it's just there's something the, the audience. Yeah, I'll, that that's not as good. It's this scene in particular with Amy and Leto alone. They're like outside. It's a beautiful yes. moonlit night, and this scene is just so powerful because yeah. It's fan servicey, but she's doing her dance sincerely. Leto's watching sincerely. The whole scene feels genuine, and it's that kind of like innocent first crush. There's just so much to this scene that I'm like, we don't usually see it done that way. Yeah, and most most shonens would have had this scene end if like a boob grab or something or a nosebleed. Yeah. This this scene is genuine and it's sincere and it's. It you, it knows it's using fan service. This is the only episode where Amy gets a lot of fan service at all. Like I, I think she gets more fan service here than the beach episode. Like, yeah, she does. Uh, now, now Bellows and uh, Richa in the beach episode is a different story. But yeah, but they were very careful about how Amy was presented. They made sure that when Leto first had that whoa, Amy's beautiful moment. It was sincere and genuine. And it was, and it was more about that he was a teenager than, like, like, when, when we were seeing the arousal and stuff like that, it was more that he was a teenager than, um, anything else. You know what I mean? It, it felt very real and less like he was disrespectful towards him because of his age and because of his, um. Have you read The Giver? Yes, I've read The Giver. You know the scene in the book? I'm, it's a 20 year old book. No spoilers. Yeah. Um, you know the scene where he first has the stirrings and he's like, I, it, I was bathing the elderly, but it wasn't the elderly, it was my friend. And like, it's like that kind of like awakening. Yes. It, yes. It, this scene reminds me of that. Yes. Where yes, For- it's sexual in a way, but it feels genuine and it doesn't feel forced and it doesn't feel disrespectful in any way. It feels like Leto's discovering what that means. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, and it feels... And it's presented yeah. very genuine. I keep saying this word genuine, but watch, watch the scene. It's a very genuine scene. It's very heartfelt. And, and it's I think... rare... What? Go ahead. It's rare that I see fan service truly develop a relationship in a meaningful yeah. way. This did. This scene, yeah. to me, is the turning point of their relationship. Or one of several. Yes. There, there's several turning points, but this is one of... This is probably the pivotal one, and it does happen in the middle of the show, like almost exactly at the halfway point. It's... It's literally like we go straight from this to Leto seeing the first whale squid. Like yes. it's th- th- a that's very a- powerful five seven minutes. Like <laughs> it's a very important. It, it, it's done very purposefully this way. Mm-hmm. And it, and when you see stuff like this, you realize that they did put a lot of thought into the. Like I, I know I've mentioned a lot of ways that they put thought into it, but they really this entire show was structured in a way that they knew what themes they wanted to come across, and they knew what important moments were going to happen before those themes were introduced. And this was one of them. This was an important moment to Leto because it was important to see him kind of find himself as a person and then give that up to go fight the whale squids. That was an important turn. And we wouldn't have had that if we didn't have this scene in the moonlight with Amy and Leto. Right. And but, uh, go ahead. To me, it's just, it's a really, it's a really great it's a great anime, and it's structured in a... Yes, there are, there are some parts that I wish were left out. Yeah. All in all, though, I love this show. Like, it, it's me, really good. This stands as a seminal coming-of-age story. It does. And I, I, will, I treasure this the way I treasure The Giver, and the way I treasure The Wild Shore. And to have one of those kinds of... It's... Like, this is... Yeah, I'm willing to admit the flaws of it, but at first I was kind of like, I didn't want to look at the flaws, because, like, this means so much to me. Like, this this has been an, a really important part of my life, but, like, there are definitely flaws. But I think if you're willing to accept that there's going to be some issues, it's a great show. And it has a lot to show you and a lot to teach you. And I think the pacing's phenomenal. Yes, the pacing, which gets into what I was talking about. Like, they're a lot more focused on telling a complete story of Leto than telling a complete story of the Galactic Alliance, and that's really great. It's really great. Did Was there anything really deep you wanted to talk about, Justin? I don't think we had, like, a really deep conversation. Was, was there something deep you wanted to say? No, no. The only... 
the only other thing I want to talk about is season two. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Here, tell me, tell me. I want to hear so, this. I want to hear this. There was supposed to be a season two. Um, the script was written. All of this. Um, it gets canceled. And everyone's really sad. We got two OVAs. Um, one's kind of slice of life. One's kind of like how Kujo got to Earth. Um, but we, we were supposed to get a season two. It got canceled. The creator says, have no fear. I'm going to take season two. I'm going to turn it into two books. These books are yeah. both out in Japan. If an English version becomes available, would you want to continue? Would you want to read these? Would you want to continue this story? It depends on the quality of the book. I like, there's, it's, there's, it's like directly made by the creator. So no, no, I get like that. But there's, there's, I, I'd want, if it's a good book, yes. If it was a well written, I'm not talking about the quality of the season. I'm talking okay. about, I would read it if it's written well. I'm worried about, cause like a lot of, um, adaptions like this, they're not, mm-hmm. they don't always get the best writers to write them, unfortunately. But if it's it was written, written well, by the yes, creator I would read. of the show. No, no, I get that. And if it is as written well as, as, as I think it will be, I would read that, yes. And I will give you a, not even a spoiler, the Leto is now 18 when this book takes place. Okay, so there's a, there's like a two-year time skip. About, yeah. Yeah. Okay, okay. But um, it's just interesting because that would mean that the whole season takes place without um, Chamber. Mm-hmm. That, that would definitely be interesting. I just, I want a stab, I want to see more of Amy and Leto, like, after it's been a couple years. Yeah, I, I would too, but I'm just, I, I also know that I don't like slice of life stuff. This, this was like the perfect amount of slice of life for me. Mm-hmm. And like, you, you should know that I just can't even stand it. Like, I tried to watch Haruhi and, um, Dylan, Dylan hates it that I can't watch that show, but I just can't. I can't watch that show at all. But, um, this, this was enough for me. This was perfect. This is the perfect amount. I, I like, conflict and that's not to be like physical conflict i mean like ideology conflict mm-hmm. that's what this show is all about this and i really funny. appreciate it yeah and it's really good i like it a lot all right so if i guess that about does it um this yeah. is gone about an hour of me just babbling about one of my favorite shows ever made and reminiscing about high school oh uh-huh. somehow i spoke more than you i think though. i know i know but it definitely it I got lost in listening to someone not me gush about this show for once that, uh... You got excited? Yeah, I got excited. Um, I kept waiting for you to jump in, but it's like, I guess that makes sense. You were just excited to hear someone else say something like, about yes, it. yes, tell me everything you believe. It's like, because I, I recommend this you, to the show to, like, everyone, and someone finally listened to me. I'm like, yes, yes, give me your feedback. I want to know. And it was interesting, because we did have different opinions on a couple of things, mm-hmm. but I don't think either of us were wrong in our opinions of things. Yeah. I, I, there, there's, there's some different ways you can view this show, and I think that's a good thing. All right, I guess that about does it for this episode of Overly Animated. Thank you so much for joining me. Yeah, no problem. All right, so if you guys are still listening, thank you, of course. Um, you can find all the info on this podcast at OverlyAnimated.com. You can join us on Discord to text chat about animation at OverlyAnimated.com slash Discord. Support us via Patreon at Patreon.com slash OverlyAnimated. Thanks to all our current patrons, especially our patron of the podcast, John, a.k.a. Garfield. And thanks as always to our Patreon executive producers, John, Ryan, Steve, Alex, and Andy. Uh, coming up, we should have some... Uh, probably some Voltron stuff still. I don't know when this is going up, but probably some Voltron. Uh, that's probably in their wheelhouse. I mean, if they're watching, if they like this, they definitely like Voltron. Yeah, Next. go listen to Voltron. I don't, I don't care if you've already listened. Go listen again. Um, we've got Ladybug, we've got Ruby. So, uh, and we might, and we have a little, and we have a little special thing coming up, but I don't know when it's coming out though. That's all. Okay, we got things happening all, yes. all over. There are many. It's a busy month. It is. It's a very and I made busy it, month. I wouldn't say that I made the month busier, but uh, it didn't need to be that way. But I totally just added in, like, a four-hour podcast last night for no I, reason. I made it worse, too. Like, and I still need to get you for, like, two more now. So <laughs> you're welcome. Um, yeah, yeah, you're welcome. Uh, yeah, and then we got Star coming up in November. So Oh, yeah, you. Star's almost out. Right, yeah, right. Star's almost out. And, and who knows when Steven comes back? Who uh, knows? Winter. <laughs> winter is coming. Uh, thanks for listening, guys, and we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.